Hi, I'm Faye de Moichant, here with you from Social Skills to teach you how to tell someone you've forgotten their name, which is a really tricky situation. So, if you're in that kind of initial window of meeting someone and you've done that, oops, forgotten their name, it happens to the best of us. It happens to all of us. So, what I always say is, Address it. Don't skirt around the issue. Don't just hope that someone else is going to say their name. Don't just hope that the right type of question will prompt them to say their name. Just be straightforward and be friendly. I'm so sorry. I just forgot your name. Would you mind telling me again? Uh, if you find yourself, however, in that window where you really should know the person's name. It's been days that you've known them and suddenly you've forgotten their name. In a case like that, I wouldn't necessarily suggest saying that you've forgotten their name, but do a little bit of homework. Send a text to someone, uh, do whatever you can to find out what their name is because there is that kind of social awkwardness if you have forgotten their name and you've known them for some time. But if you're in that kind of initial phase of meeting someone, we're all human, we all do it. We all forget people's names every now and again. So just ask, I'm so sorry, I forgot your name. Would you mind telling me again? And very likely the person has forgotten your name too. So it's a good time to make another introduction. And that's how to tell someone that you've forgotten their name. Hi, I'm Faye de Moichant from Social Skills, here to teach you how to handle being left out. So it's important to take a look at the, the big picture of things before you address how to handle this really difficult topic. And look at the bigger picture. If it's kind of a, a, a small case scenario, uh, you might not want to verbalize it and, and bring it to the attention of people. But if you are in a situation where your feelings of being left out are, are overwhelming or it's happening on a regular basis, there is a way of, of managing those feelings and of expressing yourself. So the most important thing is to tell someone how you feel. So it's, I feel blank when you blank. And feelings are never wrong. So if you get that person aside, do it outside of a group setting, but to get that person aside and to have a conversation, I definitely don't suggest doing this over email, but have a face-to-face -face conversation with someone about how it feels when you're less left out of a situation. So let's take for example, you've introduced your friend to another friend and now they're going out all the time and you're feeling really left out of the, of the situation because it's a regular thing that they're going out on their own. You might want to say to your friend, I just I just wanted to talk to you about something that, that's been bothering me a little bit lately and it's that I feel really left out when you're out in in the company of our, our mutual friend and I'm not invited and I just I'm feeling like it happens really regularly and I I value both of your friendships so much and, and you both mean a great deal to me that I just felt like I needed to get it off my chest. Doing it that way, you're expressing your feelings and you're also including the positive aspects of your friendship. So uh, sometimes I suggest doing a sandwich technique, which is start with a positive, the, the middle of the sandwich is the, the difficult stuff, and then end with another positive. And that's how to handle the difficult feelings of being left out. Hi, I'm Faye de Moichant, here with you from Social Skills to discuss the sticky topic of how to end a friendship. <laughs> Ending a friendship is never easy. There are, there are three general scenarios that, that can occur as you end a friendship. One is having a face-to-face -face verbal exchange where you most likely in the, the midst of an angry situation or a fury, you tell the person that you don't want to be friends and you explain why you don't want to be friends. Another scenario might be just ending a friendship, stopping communicating with someone and and basically ending it without giving them any reason, which is one that I really don't suggest. The other is starting to kind of wind down a friendship, which is basically winding down the communication, 
or slowing the communication down, slowing down the amount of time that you spend with the person, uh, slowing down your, your contact with the person, which hopefully and eventually starts to wind down the friendship that you want to end. And that's probably the softest way to end a friendship. And those are three ways that you can do the really difficult task of ending a friendship. Hi, I'm Faye de Moichant, here to teach you how to speak up for yourself and others when you see something is wrong. There's that old saying, if you see something, say something, and, and that really holds true. If you see something happening and you don't say something, there's a really big problem going on. So if you, if you see something happening that's not right or kind of gives you that bad feeling inside, say something. If you see something that's going on with someone else and you don't say something, it's, it's almost an offense on, on your behalf to not say something. And saying something really shows your personality. There's nothing worse than just being kind of plain and never saying anything that really means something to you. So as you see something, say something. So if something's wrong, ranging from the extreme case of, let's just say you know that your best friend's boyfriend is cheating on her, say something and just Take time to prepare for what you're going to say. I always say that preparation is really empowerment for you. So practice what you're going to say in advance. So it, rather than coming across and saying your boyfriend's cheating on you, you might want to soften it a little bit and say, I, your friendship means so much to me and uh, I, I've seen something that's been going on and I, I really wanted to share it with you as difficult it is, as it is for me to share with you. I recently found out that your boyfriend has been cheating on you. Uh, you could, it could be a situation as small as uh, getting to a restaurant and not being happy with your food or if your, your food isn't prepared the way you like it. You want to say something. You don't want to be stuck eating something that's not prepared the way you like it. So pull the waiter or the waitress aside and say something to the waiter or waitress. And in either of these scenarios, and generally speaking, uh, as you express yourself when something is wrong, you, you might want to do it in a one-on-one -on -one type of setting rather than doing it in a big group setting. So if you're at that dinner table and your food isn't prepared the way you like it, like I said, pull the waiter or the waitress aside. Don't make a big scene at the table because everyone's going to feel uncomfortable that your food isn't prepared properly. Another situation is that you might need to speak up for others. There might be a situation where you're with someone younger who's not comfortable expressing themselves. And if you see something wrong, you really need to say something and step in and help that person out. In the case where you're speaking up for others, this can be a little bit tricky because you, you don't want to be speaking for someone and making that person feel like they can't speak for themselves. So what I suggest here is being sure that the person who you're speaking for is not able to speak up for themselves. So that might be a younger person or perhaps a, a situation where there's a disability, but be really careful with speaking up for others and making sure that you're not speaking for someone else. And those are just a few ways that you can speak up for yourself and for others. And don't, don't forget, if you see something, say something. Hi, I'm Faye de Moichant, here with you today from Social Skills to teach you how to start a conversation. In so many cases, we never, we never learn how to start a conversation, and there's an art to it. It's funny, we learn so many things in our lives, how to drive a car, how to do math problems, we learn about science, we learn about language arts, but we never talk about how to start a conversation, and it's one of the most important things that you need socially to be able to do. In terms of starting a conversation, you always should be sure that you have things to talk about, and we all have things to talk about. You might think that you have nothing to talk about, but I can promise you, you have plenty of things to talk about. Starting a conversation is all about asking a question to initiate the conversation. 
So you should always have things at your fingertips that you can ask anyone. Simple questions to ask anyone are, how are you? How's your day going? How are things? If you know the person, you can ask more specific questions. But after you make that initial introduction, have questions ready to ask someone. And in terms of starting conversations, you also want to make sure that you have things to offer up in terms of your responses. So if someone were to ask you a question, how's your day going, rather than just saying it's fine or good, Move beyond the one word responses. Have things to say and to share. Let's face it, that's what a conversation is all about. It's about an exchange of information, communicating with one another. So rather than my saying my day is going well, I might say, my day is going really well. I start out, I started out in Central Park with my dog on a nice long walk, and I went home dropped my baby off, got myself ready for the office, and I've had a really terrific day at work. We did a shoot today. So my whole example here is to show you that I'm giving more information, more information to let you know a little bit more about me. Those are the most important aspects to starting a conversation and yes, keeping one going.